And one of Canada's biggest oil and gas companies is shedding what's left of its Canadian identity. And Canna Corporation, which for years has emphasized the United States as it has acquired and disposed of producing assets, says today it is re domiciling to the U.S. and renaming itself Ovintia. The company says the move is intended to appeal to large pools of investment capital in the United States. It seems to be a clear reaction to the long-running lack of interest in Canadian energy assets on the part of global investors. It is our top line story, and we want to get some more perspective now on how the business community is reacting. Goldie Hyder is the president and CEO of the Business Council of Canada, which just this week came out with several recommendations on how we can see a stronger Canadian economy, a more competitive economy. Goldie, thanks as always for joining us. He's in Ottawa this morning. Good to be here, John. Thanks for having me. So I do want to get into some of these recommendations because you guys have been working on these for the last year. But uh, this issue of losing businesses to other markets um, has factored into the work you've been doing. What's your reaction to this news from Encana today? Well, obviously, it's very unfortunate news. You know, Any time that you lose a, a, a Canadian company to another country, we have to ask ourselves, why is that happening? And unfortunately, it is a message that you've been hearing from uh, business for the last decade or so, is that, you know, companies are forced to make choices on the basis of the attractiveness of a market to be able to do a business, uh, to have the regulatory framework in place, to have the tax uh, uh, framework in place, and to be able to have the talent that's necessary. And countries are competing very, very hard, John, for capital uh, and for talent. And I see that everywhere that I go. And so it's, a, it's not a good development. It's an unfortunate proof point for me on the day that, you know, a day after that we just launched uh, really what is a, a call to action on the part of governments to get with this. Uh, we can't afford to let this continue to happen because it puts at stake the very fabric of our country. You know, we're a nation divided after the election, and we've got some serious work to do. And I hope people People who see this announcement today, rather than vent about, oh, there goes, you know, business for its own selfish interests, understand that there's a much bigger issue here that affects all of us together. Well, maybe you could tie this back to some of the specific recommendations uh, that you made in, in explaining this change. Doug Suttles, who runs this business, um, because they've already moved a lot of the business to the United States, let's face it, and there are board members that are based in the U.S. I mean, there are a lot of logical reasons for them to say, well, we need to get more of the capital pool in the U.S. You know, there are a lot of people buying um, index funds or index energy funds, and, and we need to get in front of those investors, and that's partly why we're making this move today. Uh, what could Canada be doing uh, on all levels to try to change that narrative? Well, that's a great question. Uh, you know, first, I think it starts with attitude. Uh, we have been, uh, you know, we're a country, uh, picking up on last night's baseball game, but we're a country born on third uh, and, and thinks that we hit a triple. Uh, we've been very lucky. We've been very lucky with our geography, with our neighbor and, uh, and the trade that we're doing. But th that's created a sense of complacency and comfort that is hurting us today as other countries are accelerating their strategies on how to grow their economies. You know, you look at the World, uh, World um, Economic Forum uh, rankings or the World Bank rankings on the ease of doing business. Just in the year 2006, we were fourth in the world. As of last weekend, we are now 23rd in the world, which means at least 19 other countries have found a way to get past us. And my concern is there are probably 19 others right behind us looking at how to overtake us as well. And so policy matters. I know it's not sexy to talk about taxes and regulations and skills and immigration and you know, our place in the world, but we really narrowed it down to six policy areas and have one ask just one ask in each one of those. And, and these are the ingredients that you need to bake the economy. Just like certain things bake a cake, an economy is baked by those things. And so we need to get away from that attitude of ripping down our successful, ripping down big business, and dividing big business versus small, and you know uh, the rich versus the poor. We have to change the way in which we think, because the world is changing around us very quickly, as we saw from this morning's announcement. And, and, and certainly on the campaign trail with the federal election, you saw so many dominant themes. You saw a lot of Canadians um, raising their own concerns around climate change, and obviously we saw just based on the way voting played out in Alberta, that there are many who are frustrated with policies surrounding the energy sector. I know you guys dove into that and the balancing act that might be required. What would you, what would you say about that? 
Well, I think the first thing that's required is an honest conversation with Canadians, because if there's one thing I do trust, it's the collective wisdom of our people. And what I think they will show you, if, if, if treated with respect and, and, and allowed to discuss and debate, and yes, disagree, is that the vast majority of Canadians recognize it is very important for Canada to be a global player in getting its resources to market. We know we do it more responsibly from an environment perspective. We know we do it more responsibly from a respect perspective to the, uh, the rights of the Indigenous communities communities and the concern for the environment. Uh, we do it better than anybody else in the world, John, but for some reason we've allowed our agenda here to be hijacked by special interests and movements. Uh, what we're looking for is leadership from a government. Uh, I'm pleased that the TMX pl uh, pipeline was uh, uh, you know, uh, purchased. It was a bold move to do so. Ultimately what matters is can we get it built? And we're a nation divided, and we should not underestimate the level of, of anger uh, and, the, and, the, and the emotion that is uh, overridden in the West here. Uh, they certainly uh, you know, expressed that concern on, on October the 21st on Election Day. But we need to do something about it, and we need to get past the rhetoric. I think we have to be uh, at a place to actually engage Canadians and ensure that we can get infrastructure built. Because if not, unfortunately, there will be more announcements like the one this morning. And that's, that's not a pleasure for any of us to say. Those are my members. Doug's one of my members members at yeah. Canada, and so we'd like to keep them in Canada, I assure you. So you mentioned some of these recommendations, uh, infrastructure, the regulatory environment, uh, this balance between natural resources and climate strategy. Um, at the same time, though, I mean, we just had a conversation with the head of Allied Properties, which is seeing some strong demand for their new property in Calgary from the technology sector, um, and we've also seen this uh, year, some very strong job creation in this country. Um, I know immigration is at the center of some of your recommendations as well. Uh, what were your conclusions there? Well, look, I, when it comes to, you know, uh, energy sector versus new sectors, it's not an either or. So we're very pleased to see that provinces and the country as a whole is doing what it can to diversify its economy. I think the super clusters are a small but anecdotal example of, of how we can really, uh, you know, leverage our, our smarts, if you will, because one of the things that we don't have in Canada is an actual industrial policy. So I encourage governments and, and political parties to think about what should that be. Uh, in business, we would suggest to you that it would be wise to do two things. One, take advantage of all the natural resources that we have when there are national natural resources, not just oil and gas. But two, you know, take advantage of our, of our skills and our talent and invest in Canadian workers and workforce, which we are committing to do as businesses, so that we can build the world's smartest workforce. That would be a really strategic um, uh, approach and a plan that we think would have tangible impact on the lives of Canadians who are feeling, as you well know, tremendous anxiety and anxiousness. And we want to make sure as businesses that we're investing in those people. Our report uh, at uh, itsaboutcanada.ca talks about not just what we want from government, but what business is prepared to do. Because, John, we are, we are all in this together. All right. And people can check out the full report at that site. Just before you go, um, I'm thinking about this name change for Encana, which, by the way, for, for those who don't know, that was the combination, Encana, of energy and Canada. We've already seen TransCanada change its name to TC. Goldie, among your member base, um, have you heard people uh, shying away from any references to the word Canada in their names? I mean, is that a legitimate concern that some of these businesses have? Because it's, it's hard not probably for some to feel offended by companies just really distancing themselves from Canada by just writing it out of the name of the company. Look, I, I will say about my members that, that they are very proud Canadians and that they're interested in ensuring that, uh, you know, the country that they inherited from, from our, our ancestors and forefathers continue. But they also have to run a business. And in many ways, Canadians are conflicted, aren't we? We have our pension funds. We have our stocks. And, and we're looking to our companies to generate returns for us. And they're obligated to find uh, you know, places in which they can best do that. And unfortunately, more often than not today, we are finding that it is becoming easier to do business elsewhere. Uh, the U.S. is a clear example. But I was just in Ireland. They're a magnet for capital, a magnet for talent, because there's an urgency and a desperation. And it goes back to what I said earlier. We haven't experienced thankfully, uh, anything since the Depression that one would consider a true crisis. But many other countries have, John, and they have taken actions to make sure that never happens again. We hope that Canada doesn't need to experience a crisis, that our, our leaders are listening. Uh, we want to work with them to do what we can to build a stronger Canada so that we can invest uh, here, a place that we call home. All right. Goldie, good to get your perspectives as always. Thanks very much for joining us this morning.
Thanks for having me, John. Goldie Hyder, President and CEO of the Business Council of Canada, joining us from Ottawa.